Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to change how my engine runs on my E90 BMW. My engine runs perfectly fine now with what I have in there. All right, the first order of business is going to be to remove the coil setup that I have in there now. I can tell you that it's not conventional. I've already done something a little bit unorthodox. So if you're new to my channel, I already converted the car to run on Audi ignition coils, mostly just for some interesting content to make. But I'm gonna be removing these and going to a dedicated B58 coil. If you're wondering why I'm gonna bother doing this, it's because I am gonna be switching to single turbo soon and I just don't wanna have anything that could potentially let me down given the way I wired this up. I put a lot of miles on these and they serve me well. But this was more of an experiment just to see if it could be done for some interesting content. It's not something that I plan to run long-term anyway. As you can see, I didn't even have proper connectors, but it worked. So if you guys are wondering, I'm disconnecting the power source for these coils. That is what made these different. The fact that they could take power from the car and feed the coils. So this is a standard ignition coil. This is actually from an N20, but it would be the same story, same style for an N54. That's what would fit directly in here. And you would only have so much uh, area here where you could store spark. But what Audi did here is this has got four pins and they would actually take power from another source. And the signal coming from the ECU is just kind of like a relayed signal where it would trigger this and then have it pull power from another source. And that's how I wired these up. They would give you more potential energy. So it's like you can picture it where you have a similar body here, but there isn't that much area to store spark energy. And then this is similar. It has a little bit of an area, but mostly it's gonna be taking power from an external source. So it doesn't need to draw a lot of amperage from the ECU that drives it. Now what BMW did when they brought out the B58 coils is they still draw power from the ECU. There's still only three pins here. They prefer to have full control with zero latency so that you can drive the ECU directly to the coil. It's getting power from the ECU. The response is really quick. You can detect a misfire and all that kind of great stuff. The ECU is in full control, but you need an area where it can store a lot of power internally. You want it to be able to store a lot of power. So there's this huge coil section here to absorb that. And these are supposed to deliver twice as much energy as as your original pencil style injector or the equivalent Eldor coil for this car. These were better than stock, but they had a couple drawbacks. Main thing is you're converting the signal, so there's a bit of latency there. So you may not be able to detect a misfire instantaneously, etc. Here's the DME, this is an MSD81, but if you guys are familiar with this platform, you'll know that there's the MSD80. You could run aftermarket coils that would have a similar body where they could store energy and they would draw directly from the ECU. And if you increase the dwell and push things extensively, you would draw too much power from the ECU and pull down the voltage and fry a transistor. I made a video showing you how to replace that if that happens to you, but a lot of people upgrade today MSD81 because it has a better power supply and better cooling so it can sustain more pressure. This is what I'm going to probably recommend. If you guys are running the newer ECU that has a better power supply and you want to run these coils but also run them at a higher dwell in case you're experiencing issues and you want to get the full potential, you could do so I would say with the MSD81 without really worrying because these are designed to work with the factory DME and store energy and therefore give you twice as much power, even though they get signaled the same way, there's only three pins on here. If you have the older MSD80 ECU and you wanna run these, maybe don't run the option in your tune or in MHD to run a higher dwell. So you still get a benefit, but you're not gonna be putting more spark energy than factory. So I just ran this conversion board to convert the signal to be able to trigger these coils. But that's where the latency comes into play. And of course, this is just a little experiment and kind of cobbled together just to show you what could be possible if you really wanted to try. But you know, I'm not gonna recommend you guys replicate this. In 2021, people are running B58 coils if they want more power, in my opinion. So let me show you the kit I bought. There's a few conversion kits out there to run B58 coils on N54s. It's a relatively new idea, but I went for one that I thought was most cost effective and the cleanest looking. So this is an adapter plate. It's not one big plate, it's just individual plates that you would screw to your valve cover. It's called the Fat Bunny Kit. I'll put a link in the description. Right now it's a little over $200 shipped. It comes with a, a new boot. As you can see, putting them at the same height 
this is a little bit short. If you take an Audi coil and put it at the same height, it was close. It was still a little short, but it reached far enough down. If you put this in here, it wouldn't be long enough. But when you add this boot to this, it becomes about the same length as your original coil, very close. So this is a third party rubber boot that's supplied with the kit. You gotta modify the spring to make it work. Basically, you pull off this boot here, the factory boot and modify. So let me show you how this plate will work. As far as I know, this plate is water jet cut. It's made by a gentleman named Rich. I just wanted to put this out to help the community, which is really cool. I like how it's not a huge bracket. It's not a big deal to remove it if necessary. So you basically screw these plates into place here with a screw. Believe it or not, there's a screw hole here that's just unleveraged from the factory. It's there for whatever reason. It serves no purpose otherwise, but it helps with doing this conversion here. So you just basically use one of the supplied torque screws here. It's a T15. Nice and sturdy when you put that in. Then you bring your coil over, your B58 coil, and it would thread right in, like so. Your overall height isn't bad, actually. It's not really much higher than here, so your stock uh, engine cover will still fit. Only thing is, this connector is very different. Even though it's still three wires, you need this. So this is supplied with the kit. They decided to go with a professionally made connector with the wires ready to go and then you're good to go. You just have to match the colors here to get them to work. I took these off my 440i. They have over 100,000 miles, but since we're just experimenting here and modifying them, I'll use these and I'll put the new ones on that car. So I'll get the rest of these plates installed. So this is very sturdy once you bolt it down. You can't really repin these because you'll have issues with the length. If you were to try to just cut the end off and put the pins and get this connector here, um, it's messy, it's a little complicated, you need a special crimper, and then you have an issue with length here. So this kit is designed to have you cut your original harness and splice in this connector, which is OEM grade, it's a good quality connector. So the developer of this kit, Rich, mentioned that he's an engineer and said, you know, by far the preferred method is gonna to be to splice these into the factory harness and then just plug in, you know, you're not gonna really look to going back to OEM, but if you really had to, you could always just keep these connectors handy. The kit comes with these solder butt connectors. So you'd strip the wire and then mesh them together and then use a heat gun to melt the solder to create the crimp. This is low temperature solder. It should be completely fine. Uh, and you know, these ends here are watertight and they'll help grip the wire. I did solder in the Audi coils. That would be with high temp solder. From what I understand, these are acceptable for engine bay use um, and they're good for vibration and whatnot, but it's just gonna be a personal preference thing where I use regular crimp connectors and a piece of heat shrink tube, but I don't see any issue with these. It's nice to have them. It can make your life a little easier if you guys don't have a lot of tools. So you'd wanna cut this about three inches down, splice these in, and then you'll have plenty of length. So I'll start that process now. These are already pre-cut for you. It's worth mentioning that if you guys are looking for a plug and play solution, the developer of this kit is working on something that will just plug into your factory harness. The direct connection is probably the cleanest and you know the less likely to have any failure points, but this is a good option for you guys that don't wanna hack up your factory harness. That's what you can expect it to look like. In case it wasn't obvious, it would involve depinning your factory connector and moving it over to this square style connector so they'll give you what you need to be able to do this. So you basically get that de-pinning tool. You're gonna to take off your factory connector and then snap it into the provided adapter harness so that you can keep it where you don't have to cut your wires. By the way, if you guys are wondering what the difference is between the Audi coils and the coils that come on BMWs, even modern BMWs 2022 models, they call the ones that are driven externally where they have a separate power supply, smart coils, and these are just standard coils. You have your power, ground, and then you have your signaling, and it's all coming from the ECU or the DME. So it has as much control as possible. So I guess there was a realization that from a power standpoint, because all these cars are becoming more powerful they had to either go to a smart coil or they had to beef up the factory dumb coils or the ones that are driven by the ECU. And that is to the benefit of older N54 cars because they have a three wire setup and they can be retrofitted. You don't really have to tell the DME that there's anything different at all. You could do this on a completely stock car, no two, nothing, and it would work. My goal for now until I go single turbo is gonna be to just run it on stock dwell. I'm not gonna tell MHD that I have these coils. I do have to flash the car again just to get rid of the, the setting for Audi ignition coils. 
Uh, but besides that, I don't necessarily need to run more Joel for no reason at my current power levels. Once I go single, then I'll have to maybe increase the Joel. That would be a simple checkbox option when the time comes. All right, I have everything wired up now. Looks pretty clean, you know. At the end of the day, it kind of matches the way the factory looks. And I took out the box that, that manages all these cables a long time ago when I tried out some different coils. Regardless, I'm ready to start modifying the coils now. I'll show you what's involved with that. Okay, so the next order of business is gonna be to remove all these boots. There's a spring in the top, don't lose that. All right, now what you wanna do is slice this in half. Another spring at the bottom. So we did this to pull out the resistor. So this is how it contacts the spark plug. Like that, and on top like this. And that lives inside the boot. So we're gonna have to modify this and cut this end off and stick it in the, the boots that are supplied. For some of the early adopters of B50A coil conversions for the N54, they may have just taken the supplied spring and stretched it out to match the appropriate length and maybe modified the end so that it would be a little bit more tapered. But doing so actually causes some of them to burn out. There's been reports of these springs burning out. So you'll need to leverage this. So what we gotta do is cut this end off so that it can be inserted into the boot this way to sit here. And then the top part will contact it properly. We're gonna have to cut this to a certain length and then thread it into this. So we'll start by cutting this with some side cutters. Just grab it at each joint and rotate. And this will just insert into the boot. Like so. Now the part that was living at the bottom is now gonna live at the top so that it sticks out far enough to clip into the coil. And that part's done. You can see the other end of the resistor in there and we have to be able to reach it. Now you wanna take the supplied spring, cut it in half. So that's around 47 and a half millimeters. That's about the right length. So now what you wanna do is take the spring and screw them into each other. So it's a little fiddly, but if you engage it by a few springs, then it seems pretty decent. Now with our modifications, I put a multimeter on either end, I'm getting a reading. Now that spring stays in there, which is nice. It's not just likely to fall out because it engages on the wall of the coil. So that's one completed one. Let's put it on the car and see how it fits. All right, one down, five to go. Overall, I like the stealthiness of this kit. Next thing is I like the connectors and the fact that they're already pre-made for you. It's a little finicky when it comes to redoing your harness and modifying the springs, but unfortunately there's no cost-effective way to provide that hardware without you extracting it from the coils. Because those parts come from the coils and to get them separately would be a little tricky. It would drive the cost up. With regards to the electrical connectors that are gonna be an option in the future, I don't know what the cost will be. Uh, Rich, the maker, is still confirming uh, what it may cost, but I would imagine it's not going to be super expensive. But if you guys are going to be putting the time into modifying the springs and whatnot, then putting these connectors on is not going to really be a whole lot more work. So a long time ago when I tried out some PR coils, I removed the foam from the underside of this uh, engine cover. But from what I understand, even if you have the foam in place, it will compress down and look OEM. So as you can see, that fits perfectly. I'm gonna reprogram the car now to remove the option for Audi coils and we'll give it a start. All right, so options, ignition coils. I'm gonna go with OEM. I could put B58 here, but then that's just gonna run more dwell. We'll try it as is for now. If you guys are wondering, I'm just using the wireless dongle for this. All right, we're gonna do a cold start now and see how it runs.
right guys hopefully you found this video interesting it goes to show that there's plenty of ways to make these cars run and in 2021 you probably want to consider the b58 coils i'll put a link in the description for the kit like i said slightly finicky to install but good quality and you're saving money if you don't mind a little bit of work and you can always follow this video as a guide if this is the first video you're catching on mine please consider subscribing i do upload regularly if you liked it please give it a like so rank higher thanks for watching Thank you.